we didn't realize how important important or impressive uh, Wayne was Wayne slash was. Churchill Downs. I didn't right. even know. It is literally where the Kentucky Derby happens. Yes, the Kentucky Derby. And if there's one thing I know about horse racing, it's that. What's up, dudes? My name is Matt, and this is Leia. Hello. And you're listening to a podcast where you get to hear honest conversations on the road as we travel to all 48 continental United States. Welcome to Getting to Know Us. I lost my hat on that one. Wow, intense. All right, so... This notes are on your phone, right? Yeah, I know what. It, so, where are we now, and what are we doing? Where are we now, and what are we doing? I'm driving, and I'm in the passenger seat, and we're on our way to Nashville, Tennessee. Woo! I'm excited for Nashville. I feel like it'll be a similarly fun experience to uh, New Orleans. Me too. I'm excited. Yeah, so that'll be really cool. We're staying with uh, Tori, who. I originally met when I was living in Oceanside with my brother, which is just like northern part of San Diego County. And uh, she was at the same CrossFit gym and worked for a company called Allison James, which is a real estate company. And um, so she ended up actually hiring my brother and I to film and photograph an event for them a couple years ago. And then she hired us again to do headshots, which I uh, executed on with uh, a random assistant that we had, and then now we have another gig with them, and uh, randomly, Tori moved to Nashville, so we're staying with her, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So, where did we just come from? We came from Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. Louisville, Kentucky. That was... That was a fun experience. It was less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours, but I feel like we gained, we like experienced the culture more than most of, the, most of the places we've been to other than like New Orleans or something. Right. So uh, we stayed at an Airbnb. Um, we stayed with Trace, her little house. It was called the Cozy Cottage. It was fun. It was another um, shared like living room, but private room situation. Right. Um, it was just uh, in the middle of Louisville, and uh, it was very like staying at your like cool aunt's house that's like really into like aromatherapy and painting and antiques. Um, right. She was. She honestly like, even though she was obviously a lot younger, she reminded me like being there reminded me of my grandmother. Uh huh. So See, I grand- didn't want to say grandmother because she's like younger than that. But, but that's totally the vibe. Yeah. Okay. It's because a it's like vibe. it's like nice. It's like nice. Uh, super accommodating, but then, very like, southern hospitality. I would oh yeah, say. I felt like that was the most like wow, this is southern hospitality, baby. Uh huh. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we only stayed there for one night. We arrived yesterday, got some surprisingly delicious Mexican food. Um, the avocados were not the same, but we already knew that. Um, and then, yeah, we, we uh, tried mapping out a little bit more of our route last night. And then this morning, uh, we had a special trip. So let's back up from the last time we chatted. Um, which I, I don't know. We were in the car and the we... last podcast we talked about our experience in Missouri and how we got... <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so then uh, we call our friend Jerry who we stayed with in Hot Springs, Arkansas um, because he said he had some friends who owned hemp farms that could potentially give us a tour in Kentucky, which is what Matt and I were potentially interested in. Because um, Kentucky, if you didn't know, is actually... Uh, the largest, like, locate central. It's the biggest reputation for hemp farming in all the United States. Kentucky is just like super well known for their hemp farming because uh, even I think when it like really wasn't technically totally allowed, I think they continued to do it all the way through. But they've been doing it for a long time, and 
most people in the country were getting their hemp from Kentucky before uh, huh. the 2018 crop bill. But cannabis is completely illegal. Right, so it's completely illegal, not even medically legal, and it's not decriminalized, so do not <laughs> go to Kentucky with the anticipation to consume cannabis unless uh, some laws change between now and then. Um, Which they will eventually. So anyways, we called our friend Jerry. We said, yo, Jerry, we're going to Louisville tomorrow. Do you have any friends who have hemp farms? And then he goes, oh, I'll make some calls. And then hangs up the phone and he's like very, he's so business-like, you know? He's just a really direct businessman. Yeah. He's, he doesn't have time to like beat around the bush. Right. Very straight to the point. Like he's one of those people that like answers emails with, okay. Or like, you know, like, got it. Like something like really, really We don't short. know how he answers emails because we've never emailed him, but yeah. Right, but I'm, sure I'm he... trying to paint the picture. Right, right. So, uh, very direct businessman. So he's like, I'll call a few friends. Like, talk to you soon. And yeah. hangs up the phone. And then 10 minutes later, he calls back. <laughs> and we're, we're like, we're kind of excited and nervous. Uh -huh. And then he says, oh, well, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get my buddies from the hemp farms. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of them, but... You know, you can go uh, visit my, my horse trainer, Wayne, and uh, go check out the stables and uh, at uh, Churchill, Churchill Downs. And we know nothing about horse racing. I'm assuming most of you listening probably don't know much about horse racing or the industries. Uh -huh. Maybe you do, but regardless, we didn't realize how important, important or impressive uh, Wayne was Wayne slash was. Churchill Downs. I didn't right. even know. It is literally where the Kentucky Derby happens. Yes, the Kentucky Derby, and if there's one thing I know about horse racing, it's that. Yeah, all I know is that the Kentucky Derby is <laughs> super sick, and uh, and a lot of people wear hats there. And yeah, a lot of people wear hats. That I don't think that's necessarily the thing, but uh, well, I'm not saying it's a thing. I'm just saying that's what I think about. That a lot of people wear hats. Yeah, women wearing hats to horse racing is a thing. Do you not know that? I'm well aware that people wear hats. It was just an interesting thing. But... I'm sure some of you listening will understand why. <laughs> and Matthew is just being ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. I'm being a very normal human. Anyways, uh, so we got to go to Churchill Downs today yeah. and got to see the horses that race in yeah. lots of races. And we got to meet a few of uh, Jerry's horses because he owns about 30 race horses. And uh, Wayne trains all of his horses, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And Wayne has won over 1,700 races because he was a jockey. Before. We asked. We asked specifically uh, because we were talking with one of the other jockeys that he trains or works with. Uh, that's pretty new to the game. His name is Jonathan, and he was like, uh, "How many races you win?" And then uh, I was like, "Over 1,700." And then Wayne just like 1,792. <laughs> Um, yeah. But he won his first race mm -hmm. at Churchill Downs, mm -hmm. so that was pretty sick. Yeah, got to see the pretty horses. He was just a legend. Everyone there was just like, like he had, he has that place around his finger, Wayne, and he's one of the most respectful humans I've experienced. Yeah, he took off, he took off his hat when he shook my hand, and he was just, he was very sweet and accommodating, and you know, we didn't really know what we were doing there we were just like yeah see the stables Jerry told us to come if you're wondering what that ticking is by the way we're making a left-hand turn so. oh yeah that's true um, so we're using our turn signals like responsible adults mm -hmm. and, uh, most people don't use their turn signals so a lesson out there if you don't use your turn signals you should start doing so great. But yeah so <laughs> great advice great little, little um, side note there but once we got there we didn't really know what to expect or what we exactly were going to be doing. And, right. And like Wayne wanted us, like, what else do you want to do? And we're kind of like, well, what do you want us to see? And I'm like, we have no idea. We're right. just here to take photos, I guess. Right. And so uh, we got, we, we busted out the cinema camera to for get. For the first time. For the first, no, it was not the first time. Oh, never mind. But um, it felt like it. One of the first times. But uh, we haven't been using it as much as we would like. So it was nice to be able to use the cinema camera and we got some really cool footage of uh, Jerry's race horses and some other horses and uh, even short little snippets of Wayne talking about uh, his experiences because Leia was strategically asking 
fun little questions and uh, we got to see the racetrack saw it. Um, it wasn't very busy because it's, it was kind of early and I think uh, it was raining so not a lot of people were out and about but um, it was really really cool and then as it was all happening we started to realize whoa how cool it was this is really <laughs> really fucking cool <laughs> yeah uh. um so so yeah and then we were just saying like wow this is really cool thanks so much for doing this like you know we're documentary filmmakers you know maybe the next time we come back we'll make a little short doc or something we're just kind of tossing it out there oh and he's instantly like oh yeah absolutely you guys are welcome here anytime mm -hmm. which I mean, if you think about it, it was like we got connected by the guy who, like, I'm sure pays for a large portion of his salary uh, at this living, point. His living, yeah. And so that was also why he was, like, probably so of nice course. to us. Of course. But it was like, whoa, man. We didn't realize the impact of, like, it's like the impact of just knowing people and putting yourself out well, there. Yeah. And, like, we like, didn't even know we, Jerry we three didn't weeks know Jerry. ago. Yeah, we didn't know Jerry two, three weeks ago, yeah. two weeks ago even. And just from hanging out with him at his house and getting to know about his uh, passion of horse racing, because he's been doing that for so uh -huh. long. And he then connected then us connected to us. someone else. And, and we didn't even ask for it. Yeah, we did. did it. Like, yeah. thank you, Jerry. Like, right. I'm sure Jerry won't watch this or listen to this, but if he does. We love you, Jerry. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that was. So, uh, uh, the guy, his name is Wayne Catalona, yeah. by the way. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to Google Wayne Catalona, um, do that mm -hmm. uh, yeah so and then we had breakfast at this uh, world famous breakfast place. world famous diner Wagner's um, Wagner's pharmacy which is interesting because it's kind of like a diner pharmacy and gift shop all in one right which we really liked because we were able to get a magnet there and most places that we've been to so far don't have magnets to be fair I think that was a pretty decent uh, tourist location right but sometimes it's been a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be yeah yeah but, but the price was like the price for the food was, was incredibly really inexpensive um, biscuits their biscuits were, were really good and uh, they made a mean over medium egg so yeah. I'm a happy camper it was good um, now now that we're talking about it, I'm actually starting to get hungry again. I know I was just thinking that okay um, okay so what did we learn what did we learn in Kentucky what did we learn in Kentucky as a couple as business people and as Americans. Mm. Oh, dude, we should have asked Wayne what it means to be an American. I just realized that. I realized that a little bit earlier, and then I like didn't want to talk about it because I was, it was so like, bummed. <laughs> that would have been a really just, good one. I, feel I was like. just so like engrossed he was, in. He, he was such a gentleman. Yeah. Like he, he every time he like greeted Leia or said goodbye aka the the one and two times he did that he took his hat off and it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. sure sure like people listening like oh well most southern people may do that or whatever but I mean, that never no, that's not true and California. it's like yeah it was just it was really cool because he just he, you could tell he had respect for people in general mm -hmm. you know it didn't matter who they were yeah no but we yeah we should have asked him but no. yeah but it's okay I feel like that's not the I gave last him a business time. card yeah it's not the last so. time we'll see him so um Okay, what do we learn? We so what learn, do we learn? I'd say as a couple. Also, I've gotten so many bug bites. I just wanted to acknowledge that because they're so itchy yeah. at the moment. Yeah, so, we got. A, I got a decent amount of bug bites actually for the first time when we were in Missouri. So, so we're getting hit by. Dude, those. Missouri. Missouri hat was a roller coaster, man. It was like we're in Missouri with my cousin, <laughs> and now we're getting almost arrested, and now we're up here and hanging out in St. Louis, and it's fun. I'm sure no one understood any of that. Okay. <laughs> um, am I supposed to be in this lane? Yeah, Is you're this fine. a left lane? Mm. I just say, say that because it's a solid one. No, I, if you look past his tire, it also has a straight arrow. <laughs> it's just left or straight. All right. So you might want to get over, though, just because of people turning left, but you should be okay. Um, but yeah, I'd say as a couple, I don't know. We didn't learn uh, that much. <laughs> it was less than 24 hours. Because we were there for such a short amount of time. But um, I feel like we didn't argue quite as much. No. You know, each day, like, it, it's just been so easy to be irritable with each other. Yeah. So, yeah, just again, always practicing patience and, uh -huh. you know, being um, pleasant, honestly, with one another. I, I've been guilty of just, like, short, I've been pretty curt. And uh, you know, I'll get annoyed way more easily 
with Leia's questions or small little actions that maybe wouldn't bother me as much if we weren't on a road trip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so uh, as business people, I feel like we learned a good lesson that um, always be always be closing. ABC, baby, always be closing, always be networking, and don't 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 be afraid to say what you want. Yeah, like just we're like we're like. Oh, this would be sick to do a doc on. So we're like, hey, we should come back and do a little short doc. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Now he knows that we said it, you know, because otherwise if we never said, like, said that we were interested in that, maybe, you know, down the line, someone else would approach him and be like, sure, or whatever. But because we said something made an impression on him, now, I'm not saying he's thinking about this all the time, but like we've said it and so now he knows it. And it's all about opportunity and you kind of create your own opportunity, but you also get lucky. Like we got lucky knowing you Jerry. You create your own luck. And Jerry connected us, but like I said, like Jerry wouldn't have connected us if we didn't have good conversations with him and right. it all show goes, him a good time. It all goes back to like, you know, putting yourself out there and being nice to people. Yeah. That's what it is, because how did we know Jerry? We knew Jerry because you went to some cannabis event and you were nice to Lily. Yeah, and then we stayed connected. And you stayed connected. That's literally all yeah. it is. Literally just giving people the time of day always, and it, it will it will come back to you tenfold. Yeah, so I think that's a great lesson. And I think lately people have been asking us, like, how are you guys paying for stuff? Oh, how yeah. are you doing this? And just to reiterate, we have like four clients that we're working with taking photos for as we're on the road that we uh -huh. that are already under our belt that we're already not all of them were paying us before but most of them were paying us before this road trip and then we just convinced them that hey we're doing this road trip and we want um, to you know give you a new value proposition which is just your service you're delivering mm -hmm. and so um, you know hey we can do a better campaign where you can get um, way more photos in way more places mm -hmm. and then also doing now the documentary style things with them so we're doing testimonial videos and utilizing our cinema camera to get higher quality production value for our clients ooh, so, fun bridge ooh very fun bridge so they're they're down with that oh this might be Tennessee now oh yeah well I'm just guessing because it's a natural border well let's see here overview did we already pass it um yeah I think we passed it a second ago. All right, whatever. Um, We're now in Tennessee. Woo! Uh, I was gonna say something. What was I gonna say? Um, I, I was saying something about our clients and how we're using our cinema camera to get higher oh. production value now for mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, um, we're still in heavy pre-production for the docu series that we're producing, which is called The State of Cannabis, which is. Um, you know, a short docu-series, probably up to 12 episodes maximum, uh, highlighting different individuals around in different different regions of the United States to show how cannabis legalization is affecting them and their lives and their professional world. So, um, you know, we've been slowly but surely making more connections with more people and they're connecting us with more people that would be potential subjects. and. Um, yeah, so just being transparent that that is something that we are also working on Right, and like what I will say too is that like it's tough <laughs> Well, yeah, I what I will say too though is that you know We we have good relationships with our clients, but we also had to like we have to constantly pitch ourselves Yeah, it's not like they're just like okay, you right? Know, it's like constant to... emailing and then like in-person meetings convincing them like each one of them we met with in person to pitch with a new deck that we created and spent time on to show them like what we're planning on doing and what they will get in return because that's mm -hmm. really important. People mm -hmm. don't wanna just pay money and not know what they're expecting. Right. They wanna know what they're buying. And so you gotta have a pitch deck, right. you know, or whatever you wanna call it, prepared for them that is super transparent about what you wanna do with them. Right, and then I think something also interesting to think about is that like we're not necessarily like getting paid a lot like by our business like we're basically like surviving right it's not and like i'm not saying surviving like oh we're eating cup of noodles and stuff like yeah we're eating at the places we want to eat at we're choosing we're we're getting to stay with a lot of people for free yeah which which is a huge um i guess like another thing to be transparent about is like we're, we're contacting the people that we know 
that we know they know people in these areas or right. we know so and so that uh, grew up in this state or so right. and so that like I'm thinking like we uh, went think to school so in this outside state. the box like I'm like oh uh, uh, like what's what's a university that's around there like do I know of anyone who knows anyone that graduated from there oh did can my mom post on her Facebook about someone that lives in Texas like yeah. it goes like it goes deep man like it goes deep and I feel like in the beginning people like think we're a little crazy right, right. but now that people have actually seen that oh look they're actually like across the country right now and like they are doing this. Yeah. People are now like, you know, it's that like, who's gonna dance like second or third? You know what I mean? Like it's who's gonna say yes, like later on. But people are recognizing that we're actually doing it. And so I feel like in the last couple of days when I've asked for places to stay like on my story, people are like, oh, well I actually, let me ask my aunt or let me ask my friend of a friend. You and it's hang out because, the right lane, by the way? and it's because, um, I mean, this is a normal street, but sure. Um, this is a highway, I feel like. No, it is. It's Old Hickory Boulevard, but All right, I have well, PTSD from driving know, in the left like... lane, and so we're just switching to the right lane. But anyways, continue. Um, but um, I was like pretty much done with my thought. Um, people see that we're across the street. Right, it's you know? just that like people understand that we're actually doing this and so people are more inclined to be nice to us and maybe reach out to someone that they're not even so close with because yeah. they believe in what we're doing and what right. we're doing is crazy. Yeah, and there's, it was pretty, it's, it was, uh, to piggyback on what you're saying, that we've hit up a, a handful of people that, you know, unfortunately can't house us for whatever reasons, but then I would say like at least 50% of those people have followed back up to say like, oh, my friend right. uh, saw what you guys are doing because I told them and they're willing to house you. And like, uh, now there's like um, too many people to stay with in certain places. And so that's like a huge, huge I mean, yeah, blessing that's crazy. for us. So that's really cool. So thank, thank you to everyone, by the way, that, that has, has helped, us so, helped far. us so far, that is letting us stay with them and that will let us stay with them in the future. We love you guys and we appreciate you. And we wouldn't be able to do it without you guys, so. A grazie. Grazie, grazie. And then what did we learn as um, Americans? Um, Kentucky felt like really cultural, like in regards to Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? Like there was, I felt like it was such a thick accent everywhere we went. Yeah. And ev like everyone that was in Kentucky was from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like people moved there. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like they were born and raised in state. Right, right. Um, right. Like even our host Trace, um, you know, I asked her if she'd been to whatever places or whatever. I don't, I don't think she travels very much or wants to travel very much, which is totally fine. You know, whatever tickles your fancy. But I found that interesting. You know, it's a, it's a culture of. I feel like it's generations after generations that have been living here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I think that we. I mean, when I thought of Kentucky, I thought of horse racing, so... Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even, I don't really know. I thought of hemp farms, honestly, just because I love wheat, but... Yeah, so, um... Okay, and then we're now 10 minutes away, and what to expect in Nashville. We're going to try and work today, more product photography, um, and, uh... Working on our discipline to work each morning. Work uh -huh. hard and then play hard. I feel like we've been playing pretty hard and we've still been working you know and like and when we go and hang out with like like with Wayne it felt like a vacation going and doing stuff but, and really, out, that but was... really that was work that was establishing rapport with both Jerry and Wayne and which by know, the way we, we should text uh, we should text Jerry yeah but I want to send him photos and yeah. stuff too but um, but yeah so uh, that was that was it that was it that was Kentucky it was less than 24 hours but it felt like two days Yep, that's cool. Yeah, so don't forget to follow us on our social platforms on Instagram to stay up to date with our live action day to day at Matt Meredith, at Livin' As Leia, at Unreal Stories, which is U N R E E L Stories, and at Cottonmouth Media if you enjoy the cannabis and the reefa. So follow us, love us. Contribute to us, and donate to us, whatever you want to do. Tell your grandma about us. And subscribe to this podcast wherever the hell you're listening to it because we love you and we want your support. Mwah. Mwah.